so this video is for mobile IRL streamers, not particularly for the live view um, equipment, but if you want to use your phone, and it's a it's a great alternative uh, towards live view. So instead of spending a thousand dollars on this and whatever other equipment such as um, a camera, um, let me pull that out, like an action camera. Um, this is a cheaper and better alternative for what I'm about to talk about. And um, I'm going to talk about my physical equipment, the software that I use, and uh, a couple of video tutorials that you guys need to watch if you want to take IRL streaming seriously. Whether you're a mobile uh, um, streamer, uh, mobile IRL streamer, or if you're going to use expensive ass equipment such as the Live View Solo and whatnot. This is my mobile streaming setup, and it's lighter than using the Gun Run backpack with the Live View um, Solo. And the reason why I choose this, because uh, this has more functionality and it's just more flexible what I could do versus this. So, AT&T modem, Sprint slash T-Mobile modem, Verizon modem, and I can either choose to have it all wireless so the Raspberry Pi will receive that signal, or I can plug in um, the USB Type-C, all three of them, and plug it into the Raspberry Pi, and it'll still receive the signal. Then the Raspberry Pi is using um, the Ubuntu Linux, and it's using a service called Speedify, which all links will be in the description, and it will use Speedify to bond all of these internet connections. And even if I put on my hotspot on my phone, and a hotspot on this phone, uh, it will receive that signal and it will combine all of that and it will spit it into this travel router or into this router. This router right here um, will receive internet and it will spit out Wi-Fi only. While this one can spit out Wi-Fi and it will, uh, if you want to plug in a uh, Ethernet cord to it, you can as well. And that's what I love about it. Um, versus the Live View Solo, it's a great product. Um, but when you have multiple, it, it can only handle up to four connections. Um, you would have to get uh, a different product from LiveView to handle multiple connections. While this, you know, is a, a fraction of the cost of what this is. And it will only receive the signal and it does not spit out Wi-Fi, unfortunately, or any type of signal. Um, it will only receive the Wi-Fi. Um, additionally... Live View Solo has their own um, technology. They call it LRT, which you have to pay uh, almost 50 bucks extra just to combine it versus you can purchase Speedify for anywhere between 50 and to $100. I got mine on a deal and I spent $50 and I got a three year plan versus spending 50 bucks on this every month just to combine this and and whatnot, but this is cheaper and this is the better route. Um, I could uh, use this with this and uh, and uh, it'll receive the Wi-Fi or ethernet and put in a HDMI um, uh, cord with the camera in it and it will still work just fine. And you know, it will skip um, paying 50 bucks a month for that. So, but I use my phone to video record you can either use a tripod, which I need to get a new one because it's missing a leg, or you can get a shoulder strap for your backpack, and or you can get a um, chest harness and put this on your phone and just mount it on down, and it's good enough. Um, I chose this backpack um, because summer's here and it helps things with ventilation. It does come with, uh, at the bottom here, it does come with a rain cover. And it's like, it's very inexpensive, 20, 30 bucks. But um, it, it fits all this in here and it, it's just good. It's good to go. And, um, you know, if I ever just wanted to uh, mount my phone... Uh, I got this quick release, and I can just mount it towards my tripod instantly, or I can mount it towards um, um, my shoulder strap if I have the quick release on it, and, and it'll be uh, simpler too. Um, I use the Bose speakers, and the Bluetooth on this will never die. 
as in if it never receives any audio signal it will always remain active or if it doesn't receive a sound that is it will always remain active I'm going to show you a couple of videos of what apps I use on this phone or even on the iPhone um, that I use that will also help out with streaming and there's also a couple other videos if you want to have a um, home OBS server and a home RTMP server so whenever your stream cuts out and dies um, it will switch to a BRB screen of whatever it is on OBS until the signal picks back up and it will resume streaming. I also forgot to mention that I have a wide angle lens. Right now it's a little bit scuffed because it's not put on properly, but if I were to take it off, you see the difference. Um, this one particularly cost me uh, 50 bucks, give or take, and you can pick up yourself a, a wide angle lens on Amazon uh, for a little bit cheaper, but everyone, um, all the reviews that I read said that they recommended this one a whole lot, so I went with that one. This is the Lorex Broadcaster app. I'm screen recording the app, and this is used for IRL streaming. You can get this on Android and iPhone. The one thing that you really want to use this app for is for bitrate adapting. So if you do not have good signal while you are outdoors, it will dec decrease the bitrate and try to stabilize the stream and make sure it keeps up with the bitrate. And I strongly recommend turning this on and it has the functions to turn on image stabilization. Um, I don't know if iPhones have it, but, um, or that's not the iPhone. This is the iPhone, anywho. Um, but with Samsung's, uh, with the newer flagship phones, it has what it's called a OIS. Um, it has image stabilization. So if I were to shake my screen, it will try to stabilize that. And I'll show you how to set this all up. So on the screen, you will see this cog icon then click on connections because we want to um, we want to uh, stream towards our Twitch or home OBS server. Um, let me go ahead and delete this. This this doesn't matter. This is a made up uh, RTMP. And you can have multiple connections streaming to multiple uh, multiple Twitch channels or Twitch and YouTube. Um, I strongly recommend to stream towards to you know, restream, then it will take care of the bandwidth on, uh, take care of the bandwidth on their end. So you're just sending whatever bit rate here, instead of doubling the bit rate to two different channels and so on and so forth. So give it a name, which is going to call it RTMP one, give it the URL, which is the RTMP URL. This is Twitch's RTMP URL. Then after the app, then forward slash, that's where you put the stream key. So I'm just going to just spam it, just pretend it's a stream key. And leave everything how it is. You do not need a login and password and go ahead and hit save. And so now that it's checkmarked, it means whenever you hit that big red button to stream, it will send it towards this destination. And again, you can have multiple connections if you want to, uh, multiple channels to stream to. Um, as for video, give it the resolution that you want. Um, if you are in a bad area that does not give signal reception or does not give you good signal reception, uh, I suggest turning it to uh, 1280 by 720. So this is 720p. And whatever you select, whatever resolution you select on, it will automatically adjust the bit rate. But however, I change, uh, uh, I change that. So I turn that off so I can manually change the bit rate. So if we were to go towards uh, 1080p, Where's that at? Uh, 1920 by 1080p. I lost it. Oh, it's right there. It's one above. I'm blind. My finger was covering it. So now it goes to 3000 bit rate instead of 2000. However, I wanted 6000. And with 6000, that's the max bit rate that you can do on Twitch. So, um, right here it says video stabilization. Um, I'm not sure what IES is used for, probably maybe iPhones, I'm not knowledgeable on that, but I know iOS is for Samsung specifically. So make sure that your Samsung phone uh, has image uh, stabilization. Mine does. So 
Now we scroll down a bit and you'll see adaptive bit rate streaming. So let's say if I was in a building and, or let's say I, I was outside and I had good signal, I had 6,000 bit rate. But as soon as I go inside the building and I do not have adaptive uh, uh, bit rate streaming enabled, and as soon as I go inside that building, I start dropping frames, and it's not stabilizing the, the stream whatsoever, and it might actually cut it off. What you wanna do is make sure you toggle this button on, and you select the mode and make sure it says, uh, the middle one, descend. You want, so instead of, instead of it trying to give it more upload speed, it's actually lowering the bit rate slash upload speed. So, that definitely will help you out during your live streams. Next is when, uh, whenever you turn off your screen, it will stop the stream. If you were to change to a different app on this phone, it will stop the stream. So you go to advanced settings and you wanna make sure that this is toggled on. Oops. Yeah, make sure that this is toggled on. And it's gonna be, uh, start the app again. So make sure that is toggled on. So now you can turn off the screen and save yourself some battery on your phone and keep streaming. Um, you can have overlays, but if you stream to a home OBS server, then you really don't need to worry about this. But you can have overlays on your stream if you truly desire. All you gotta do is hit new overlay, get the URL from uh, Stream Labs or Stream Elements and put it right there and give it a name, um, or you can select file and, and it will browse through your phone for that file. But however, um, again, I have no home OBS server. So, um, you can go, it doesn't have to be portrait mode, it can be in uh, landscape mode as well. And you have the mute button, you have the button that's on the left that will switch to the front uh, camera. Um, to zoom in, you have to hit this uh, three horizontal or three vertical uh, button and you have to zoom in manually like, like this. You just can't pinch with your fingers. Uh, or actually, wait, wait, no, no, it was focusing. Or maybe I'm lying. Maybe you can. At first I had problems, but huh. Anyways, um, this is where you can have quick access to do a little bit of modifications towards your stream. And here on the bottom, uh, bottom right, you can just take a picture as normal and it will save it towards your phone. That's basically it. It's that simple. This app is really powerful to use and I strongly recommend it. It's better than the Stream Elements app. It's better than the Stream Labs streaming app from your phone. And if you want to screen record, you have to download the Larix a screencaster which will record from your phone but it has the same settings that I just showed you on this app. This is called IRL chat and it's only available on Android but it's a highly powerful device for Twitch streaming. Um, a couple of things is you can manage browser sources so if you want alerts to play from your stream lab, stream elements, or you can even pop in other overlays that will send off alerts, it will play through um, this icon here, or through this app here, and you can see through the various of, uh, you can toggle either one. Um, they're both always active, so you don't have to have one always selected, but it will always play. And you know, you can, in, uh, you can import, export and if you ever uninstall it but you hit the plus button and then you name it whatever you want and uh, get the overlay URL from stream lab stream elements and so on and so forth you can modify the text size the batch emote size and you can have BTTV uh, FFZ uh, I never heard of 7 TV but I'm gonna go ahead and enable that um, you can have animated emotes, since now that's a thing. Um, show timestamps and messages, and I actually want that enabled. Uh, you can show the viewer counter. Uh, you can join other people's uh, channels uh, if they're uh, streaming with you, or for whatever reason you just want to join another channel for, for, through this app. The one thing is TTS. I love TTS. 
and I used um, uh, speechchat.com, and you can allow TTS through speechchat.com uh, with a command, and you can let everyone, uh, subscribers, VIP, and or mods, or give certain groups TTS. I wish that this chat gave that uh, permissions to certain people with TTS because, you know, if you're outdoors and you have a speaker, uh, you know, people could abuse that. But with Android, um, you can open up the settings and, you know, you can choose uh, whatever TTS uh, voice you want. So it could be an Australian voice, an Englishman's voice, American voice, so on and so forth. And um, if you have a speaker that does not uh, receive or hear any audio, what this will do, every five minutes, it'll play a silent audio clip preventing from the speaker from going to sleep, which is really awesome. Um, I don't, I have a, a Bose speaker that just never dies out um, or turns off, so, but this is for Bluetooths that just automatically turn off. And I strongly recommend it. Uh, again, it's only for Android apps. This video is for mobile IRL streaming. Um, and these are the equipment that I use, the software that I use, and I also made tutorials about stuff that will help your mobile IRL streaming work. I used the uh, LiveView Solo before, and I still have that actually, and um, but I don't wanna use that because I want to carry less. I want my backpack to be easier to carry around because I'm fat and weak and I don't want to carry around all this heavy ass cameras or anything like this. But if you want to get an IRL streaming for mobile, this is for you. Um, I strongly recommend watching these videos as well because this will tell you how to combine multiple hotspots and modems on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, this is the LiveView Solo LRT alternative, meaning if you have the LiveView Solo, um, to combine modems, you would have to pay for the LRT, which is 50 bucks extra a month, versus you can pay 50 bucks on Speedify. Well, I got it on a deal on Speedify and I paid 50 bucks and it gave me a three year plan. Um, let's see how much this costs right here for a three year plan, a uh, hundred bucks. Okay. So you'll pay a hundred bucks for a three year plan that will essentially do the same thing as the live view solo, um, that will combine multiple modems and the same method will have, like, you can use the same method of combining multiple modems, then connect your live view solo on towards, uh, towards your raspberry Pi and it'll work just fine. Um, the reason why you want multiple modems is because if one of the carriers goes down, so if I have Verizon um, and that goes down, I still have AT&T and Sprint slash T-Mobile to carry the stream. So you want different carriers and not of the same carriers. Um, so instead of having like two Verizons or two AT&Ts because you can hit a dead spot and you know when AT&T goes down, what's going to carry your, your stream? Nothing. So you want different carriers. So I strongly recommend watching this video right here. And when you, uh, if you look at an IRL streamer and when they hit uh, a bit rate or when they don't have connection, it will automatically switch the OBS scene to BRB and they'll have clips playing or whatever it is. And this is what this video is for and it's a really powerful uh, video. So you can get it on uh, Windows or if you want to run it on Linux, you can. So this will show you how to set that up as well with an Nginx server, RTMP server. Now, as for this last video, um, this will show you how to set up the overlays uh, when you're IRL streaming. I know it says live view uh, solo, but it also helps out. Um, it also relates to mobile streaming as well because you can set up your uh, st overlays on OBS and all these other extra stuff. And you need to watch this video to make sure that this applies towards you. These other videos are optional. Uh, this talks about my uh, live view solo and the other equipment that I've used and how to set up the live view. If you happen to have one, um, this will, um, this video here, you can stream to multiple platforms at once using restream. And if you don't want to use a restream, 
uh, this video will get down to the nitty gritty configuration with uh, Windows and there's also a Linux one that I will provide. Um, so if you want to not use a restream, but use your own connection, um, which will, if you have more than one channel that you're streaming to, it will double the speed or triple or quadruple of how many channels you're streaming towards to. So these three videos are optional. Um, it'll be tagged in the description down below and it'll say as optional, but these three, whichever one of these two, but these three are recommended. If you enjoy my content and want to support me, consider being a channel member. A link will be posted down below. Also check out my live streams on twitch.tv slash Codactual for that dark sense of humor, edgy content, everything's more unfiltered over there within TOS reasons. And for tech support only, join our Discord. I'll see you guys there.